welcome to the channel. Uh, so I'm going to start a kind of a live coding thing. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but let's give it a shot. Um, I'm basically going to start a program for uh, this evolution video that I watched. It's uh, David Randall Miller. It's a really awesome. Uh, it's a really awesome video, but he goes through this kind of simulation thing that really compelled me to kind of come come through and make kind of a shell for it. So this is me making it live, redoing it. So, but uh, David Randall Miller, I'll to see if I can. Um, That's the video this is all based off of, in the Twitch anyway. And then I'll put it in the YouTube when I do these videos. But for right now, let me take that off. So we're going to start with um, a new Forms app. And we'll just call it Evolution Shell. So we'll do that. Oh, let me make sure I got the right. There we are. We got a shell. So you just gotta fill in the stuff and you're all done. There you go. Nah, I'm just just teasing. We'll go through more of that. So anyway, the basics of this, uh, the basics of this, kind of going through the beginning here, is we've got little creatures and then they've got brains and they've got uh, genomes and it's kind of complicated but we'll go through it all here as we as we do it so uh, the first thing we're going to start with is we've got our form here and let's go into the code so we kind of need to come up with um, kind of the shell of how we're going to display it all here and I'm going to throw it all into one big shell one big form so it's going to be kind of a big, bulky looking thing, but um, we'll see how it goes out. All right, so the first thing I should probably do is let's go ahead and make a Will be our generate button, generate world. Name it. Next 
So we want this, we want a tab. And so for tabs, you can go to this tab pages here and then you can edit these through here in the properties if you haven't really done this before. So we're going to have a world view, we're going to do overlays, we're going to have a world history to look back at. Spelt right. Alright, so our world view we're going to need a couple labels here. One label. We need two labels. We need a picture box. This is going to show us our world. And we might as well get these two labels, copy those, move them down. And we need two buttons. So far, we're going to do two buttons anyway. And, you know, once this is, if you're following through, once I put this up on YouTube, if you wanted to go through and make this yourself, you can kind of follow through a little bit on how, how I'm doing it anyway. Kind of come up with your own little version. So we're going to have a one run or run. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Let's see. Uh, run. Gen, button. So this will basically let us go through one, one at a time. And then we have this, uh, we can run a year. It's basically how I'm doing it. He did it a little bit differently. Run your button. Okay, so we've got world view. Might as well just change this. Keep doing the the design instead of the text. All right, and then we've got So basically, this is just setting up what we're doing. And we'll just say, really not used, and we'll call this the label. Picture box one will be the world. world picture box. All right, so this is going to be our world parameters, basically. So we'll put this up here to show that it is. So the form one is basically, it doesn't hold much other than all of the information that we want it to display. The rest of it's going to be calling all the different classes we're going to create.
and just to kind of make this simple because I've already made this but just to save some time here I didn't have the button in the panel the last time. I should probably do that though. And then, you know, if you wanted to make new forms or whatever, make a game out of this, you know, it's it's kind of a neat little, uh, what we're gonna come up with is kind of, gonna be kind of a neat little shell that we can have. I kind of wanted to start going into making a, making a game with it all, but I thought this would be a really good video on, on that video that this, that this guy did. I mean, it was a really fascinating video to me, but there's a lot of people who are like, I really wish there was somebody who would make a shell for how he did this, just so you could play around with some of the parameters, and that's kind of the whole point. All right. So I need two more text boxes. This boxes. One, two. See behaviors. I'm gonna do at a later point because we don't need that as much. But to finish this out, let's do one more pan. Let me actually let me see if I can copy this whole thing. Yeah, we'll do that. So we've got a population of creatures. So this will show population members. This will show the different uh, genes within the genome of each selected member. So if you haven't worked with list boxes, it'd be kind of a neat. Um, kind of a neat, it's it's kind of an easy way to to work with data. And all of this is generated at runtime, so I'm not really even using anything that's... Let's clean this up a little bit. Because <clears throat> there's probably going to be some more parameters that I'm going to want to add. Um, Maybe a couple checkboxes for like if they can kill each other, which I've got the code in there for it, kind of. I've got kind of a different way of making children that I haven't really implemented yet that he did, but it could we could do it both ways. I guess I'll just copy this real quick since and I'm using some tuples if you haven't heard of tuples tuples are pretty cool but they're very useful for kind of sending little chunks of data that is dynamic within your structure. Right, I'm going to 
let's start listening. Alright, let's way too loud on that part front. Let me get that down. I'm gonna do some music while we you guys might have even been able to hear that one. Alright, so there we go. I got some music on the Amazon if whatever, but I'm gonna be doing this on YouTube so I don't want it to be all it's kind of a neat little program. Informational for some. Okay, so here's our basic basic form. And of course, here's our very basic form. So up here is where we define our we define our parameters up here, and then we define new classes and New classes and functions below and we're not really going to be importing too much I don't think I have too much that I'm going to be using other than what's standard so it should be pretty easy to follow along with uh, with what we're doing on that now a few things we're going to need is if we go to this evolution shell let me make sure I still got that okay if you go over to here and we want to add stuff into the into the program. So the first class we want to add is a citizen of our world. Well, actually, let's do a world state class. So this would be the this this is going to, what's going to represent our world. Then we'll have citizens within our world. And then we are going to have each citizen is going to have a brain. The brain will dictate the behavior, which derives based off of the genome. So each citizen will have a brain. And it'll have a genome. So we'll create the genome. And each genome will have genes. Gene. Each gene will have behaviors that associate with it. Make sure I spell it right this time. So we've got world state, gene, genome, citizen brain behavior. Double check. Oh yeah, we need neurons in the brain. And then we also need A coordinate for our map for a world basically it'll represent everything within each pixel so there's our basic structure here um, we've got brain behavior citizen coordinate gene genome neuron and world state the program is already generated um, So there we go. 
So there's a form. We'll go back to form one. And our first parameters, we're going to have inner neurons are going to kind of be one uh, thing that's going to pass around. So So we need a map size. And let's put this under world. Put this under brain kind of organize it out a little bit. We're going to have a population in our world. A population. Maybe it's a bunch of dogs. Who knows? Let's do... Uh, uh, let's go ahead and... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy some of this stuff again, just for simplicity, make it a little quicker. All right, so there's some of our world gens per year, genome length we want to put down here. This one we're actually not using. Actually, we'll use it. And then here we'll, we'll do which we'll have, we'll have a way to change this when we do our world, our world generation. So the world state itself will be where did I start it? So what do we get? Set. So there's our world, world starting state, and then we'll have citizens. So we'll have a list of citizen class. array. All right, so behavior we're not going to mess with. And then we'll just add in a couple, we'll add in some tuples here for our inputs and our action neurons, basically. That's what that's for. And what a tuple is, is basically it's a structure that's, it's kind of like a list within, a, within itself. So it's basically three strings long within, so it's basically if it's, um, it's basically like three words or three strings of sentences. And then it's each set, each one of those is a set of those three things. So you could have a list. So this is basically making a list of all those things. And I'll show you how that works when we get into the, uh, the actions. So the first thing we wanna do here is get to here. And we want to do our generate world button. Okay. 
So since we've already got all of our numerics, Just make sure we get numeric up one through eight. One through eight. All right, so this is basically getting all of our um, values out of those parameters. When we hit that button, it'll pull it all off of the um, It'll pull it all off of the uh, form that we have there, kind of. All right. So the first thing we want to do is set or started state. And this basically is going to make our world. And we're basically saying world, uh, make our world. Um, oh yeah, because we don't have that. So we're basically saying make our world. And so now we need to go to the world state and make this function, basically. So we've got nothing here. So now we go down here. Do an int of x, int of y. Int of something. I forget. And then a string, I think, of x. Let me double check that. So we've got int, 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 five ints. All right, so we'll define these real quick. Because I'm forgetting what they were. Year, gen, gen per year. Okay. It'd be better if I do it down here, huh? There we go. Now this is where we do parameter 
orders and then classes and We'll need a bitmap. We'll just start with a null. Oh yeah, so we'll have to, this is the only one I think we're gonna be bringing in. We need system drawing, I believe. need to know what the changed X is. And the change to Y. So we'll have a couple colors to start out with. Color and do a white color. I'll just copy all this because this is a lot of this is just junk typing. But basically, what we're going to need is we need a world state ID. We're gonna have a world state population associated with the world state. So once we make the population, we'll send it to this. It'll contain its own population within it, and then it can reference around. Um, and then we've got a year, we've got a population account, um, what generation it is, how many generations per year, which we'll set from the form. Uh, and then we'll have some, a couple of arrays here of world state and then some of the occupied, um, which ones are occupied, which actually I don't need as much because I'm doing coordinate system. I don't even think that's gonna be used. So speaking of coordinate system, we'll have to bring in a list of coordinates and that'll basically hold all the coordinates within the map. And then we've got a list of the world state history. So basically every time it saves a world state, it'll save the whole the whole thing and then build a new one. And then it, the old state puts into the list. That way we have a history. And then we also have a history of the world bitmap as it was, which could be created based off of the world state itself. I just did a bitmap for simplicity on the, on the deal. And then we've also got like a, an overlay list um, we're not really doing the overlays just yet, but we'll put it in there. All right, so the max X is going to be X, and the max Y is going to be Y. The year is going to be... the year coming in. So remember, this is all coming in from the form. These are the five things we're sending in, five numbers, basically. Sending in the gen. that. 
So there we are. So we got all we got those five things set. And the only thing that we're going to be doing differently is We're going to be generating an ID, and then we need a new world map, or not a new one, but we already declared one up here. So that we need to define that function, and then uh, so this one we're going to do a new bitmap. Put in how big. Maybe how big we sent it in from. And then we've got our coordinates. We're going to clear just in case. And then we're going to set new coordinates. send in coordinates. So we've got two functions we're going to make. Generate ID. Make it public. And it's going to return an int or a string. string so we want it to return a string it would be void if you don't want it to return anything if it's just like a button or something it's a void so first we'll make a string This one's a void. And we're sending in into x, into y, and coordinates, a list of coordinates, of coordinate. All right, so this is our basic world state. You know, we are going to do one more call to the class, which uses another world state. We'll call that old state. And the only thing that we're going to be doing differently with the with the old state is basically stating that some of the stuff is so the old state world state generation and then gems per year will leave so the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add a population which we won't do when we first create it there. We want the 
world population. And then what else are we going to state? So basically that's going to add the old population to the new world state. This is basically for creating a history. And then the world state ID is going to have a new ID, pop count in the history. Since that's a list of citizens, we'll have to do the count of that. So a new history. is going to be the old history. generating and this one we're just going to copy the old one so we don't need to set these and then the world history So we're not using that one yet. We're only calling that first reference, but because of that, we're still going to need this add population. And we're doing it. List of citizens. population and chords coming in so there's our main world functions we'll have a couple more that we add in for some other things later but we're pretty much separating all the all the bits of the people away from the world map and and that kind of thing oh yeah we want a save state copy this in because it's easier so it's basically going to take the sent state it's going to add it to the world history 
It's going to generate a new ID. It's going to add it to the world history um, map. What did I do? Name it different. I probably don't want to do that, do I? That doesn't really matter, but oh well. I'll update all this. And then basically it sends a new um, a new map for the world. Alright, so for generate ID, we're just basically gonna state. World state y equals the world state year. To string, anytime you have a an integer, you want to make it to string, or else it won't really come out right. And then we're going to say, and this is just basically to give it an identifier for what generation it is, what year it is. So that's all it does for the generate ID. Pretty simple. Now set coordinates is, is pretty simple as well. Um, it's basically just a for loop. So for integer, basically of whatever you want to put in here, you could put I, you could put, I just usually put I because it's right there or whatever. Just used to doing it that way. So you start it off with, you define uh, for a forward loop, basically you're, de you're defining where you start. So you can start at zero, you can start at 10, you can start at whatever. Um, but we're just going to start at zero um, because we're going to go with when i is less than the total of uh, world state coordinates. And since this is a list of coordinates, we've got to count. The total, the total amount. So it's basically saying for every time that we have I goes to the world state, for every time it's less than the world state coordinates total, it's going to do something. And then after it does something, it's going to do, it's going to make I one more, which is what that plus plus does. So it's going to add one to I basically. So it's basically saying you do code here. And then at the very end, it'll basically say i is equal to i plus one is essentially what that i plus plus is. Now, if I did it in here in the loop, then it would then it would increment it twice. So there's some interesting things you can do with for loops. Once you get them though, once you understand them though, they're not too they're not too rough. Let's see, so if, if the world state coordinates of i, of whatever, so if the total is 10, we're starting at zero, so if this is the first one, it's gonna be at zero. If this is the second one down the line, it'll be at two, whatever i happens to be at that time. So we're gonna say whatever coordinates i of, Let's make the coordinates real quick. Well, we'll just say it. We'll just do it here because we know what we're going to do. But we'll do the x value basically. If it equals 
um, X because we're bringing in X from the, the formula or no we want and so these two things are basically saying do both if you do these little slashes it's saying do or either or but this one we want to make sure it's both X and both Y if I get it to go right Because it's basically a coordinate system. So you've got X and Y values. You've got a map of if you've got a map of you know 10 squares, you've got a hundred coordinates within it. So this would be going through each one of those coordinates and saying that if these coordinates match up, which is why I did a coordinate class, because then we could put the whole we could put both coordinates within the class itself. Makes it a little easier. All right, so basically that's all that is when we're saying to set the coordinates. So let's go to coordinates real quick and do that. So we need a public coordinate. There's just a basic one. Don't don't have to use it or not. Good to have a default constructor in there, basically. So basically what happens is when it calls the class, it goes to the default destructor constructor that has no variables at all, unless you send it in with a variable. And I believe all this has is just X and Y. Let me double check that though. I've got one other identifier, I think. So bring this guy in. So basically we've got a citizen, an X, a Y coordinate, and then wherever, whatever the world state it happens to be associated to. And then that way all the coordinates can be attached to the world state so that when you save the world state, it'll have its own coordinate map associated to it. So you can pick each citizen off of that. Makes it a lot easier to each to kind of group it all that way. So we've got a citizen, we've got state that's a lot of L's that's a lot of public So there's a basic coordinate. I'm not even using that one. Why did I put that one in there? I don't know why I put that one in there. That's right, because I changed it up.
now that should match up that we've got these named right. World. That's right, I changed it up in the middle of, uh, just, just in case. I was kind of thinking about like making games. It's a cool shell for making like, if you wanted to kind of make games and, or if you wanted to kind of make these creatures to where you wanted to make them fly some t someday, maybe they evolve, they get the ability to fly. So we'll have a, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a, a Z. Z. So we'll have a uh, occupant's length. Where am I getting occupants from? Oh yeah, we need a list of citizens of all the, the occupants that might be within this coordinate. And then we need a... Let's copy that. We've got an ID, citizen, got a citizen world. Yeah, I'm not using that. So basically what we're doing here is when the coordinate comes in, we add the occupant to the list. And then we have um, two functions that'll basically remove three functions. We're going to remove them and we're going to add them. So it'd be pretty, pretty basic for this little class. So this will return the list of citizens within the coordinate. This will add an occupant to the coordinate, and this will remove an occupant to the from the coordinate. So we'll go ahead and do get occupants list. Add occupant to the coordinate. I had kind of a little weird thing with the coordinates and I wonder if I might want to just do this. Because it might have been what was going on there. So that will just define it a little bit easier. All right, so that's all we need for the coordinate. So now we can go back to the world state. Just sending the whole thing. Yeah, we're just sending the whole thing. Oh, that's right. We're just doing. The 
this coordinate. So we got save state, generate ID, set coordinates, and then we've got add population we've got to do here. We'll also add on the world map we're going to do a coordinate color. Um, what else are we going to do here? Add population, we'll add in the population, the coordinates. We'll update the population count when we do that. And then we populate the world with the population and the chords. So we need that function. Sending in the citizen array of population and chords again. So we've got pop Y. So the world has three pop three coordinates that we're basically gonna fill. So we've got another for loop. And for this one we're gonna use population.count. Which is the list that we're sending in. So the same thing for every iteration of I, whatever it happens to be at the time, we're gonna go ahead and assign all of these three things. So we'll send in the population of whatever it happens to be loc x. We don't have yet, so we'll just do log x. So for every citizen, every citizen is going to have a location associated with it as well, where they are in the world. So basically we're, we're borrowing that from the list of citizens that we just sent in. And then this is where we add a coordinate and we already added in the, we already added the coordinate constructor so we're all good there the only thing we don't have is we don't have the citizen uh, class all filled in yet so that's why all this will will not show yet because it doesn't have it doesn't have any definition so far and then we already set the set pixel so it's basically gonna set the set the uh, coordinate color to red Sets a coordinate to, and then we'll just do make a coordinate. Transfer loc. And 
going to do an add to population if we bring in a citizen and we want to add a, like a new citizen, like a, a child, then we can add it to a current, current population. It's currently not used, but I've got, like I said, I've got a different way to make the creatures that could be used. So might as well throw it in there. All right, so that's the basics of the map right now. We're going to do an add entity, update entity. Um, we'll do draw pixel for, uh, thing, and then we'll do the thing for the step, the generation. The generation, uh, each world, since each world state represents one generation, each uh, step that we do is going to be within the world state class itself because it's basically going to be updating itself. So let's go to citizen and we'll start this one out. So we've got classes and functions, we've got a public citizen now I've got a lot of got a lot of stuff on this one but uh, it's not all necessary. I added, a, that's kind of why I started doing the videos because it's, I added a bunch of stuff in and I thought this would be really cool for people who are interested like in the comments on how do you make something that could make a game with that. So I've added some other stuff in here already kind of for that. So basically here's our citizen. What we've got is a genome link that we send in. We send in the inner neurons, which come from the first form. The genome length is uh, created when we create the genome, um, which is created here. The brain is created here. And then everything else kind of follows from that. Um, so the citizen really kind of holds the brain and the neural network, just, just like the guy has in the video. Um, it's just... I've got my citizen doing a lot more than just having a location and genome and uh, at least I've, I've got possibilities for things. But the way that I've got this set up is so that we've got the inner neurons that come in, we've got a genome length that's based off of how many genomes we set in the world parameters on the, on the main form here. So when we set these genome length here, then that's what that's that's doing. We set the inner neurons here. Then that's what the, that's what that is doing as well. Now the member is going to be um, which member of the population, and then um, the world state is which world it's associated with. What the map is, um, which has got all the coordinates. It's got the world map associated to it. So it's got it's got all of that data kind of with it every time we create a citizen. And then what I've used is tuples, which is what I was talking about earlier. But basically, I've, I'm using tuples to bring in the input structure, which is the input. There's input neurons, there's inner neurons, and there's sensory neurons. And then there's, um, there's an identifier with that. There's an action with that. And then I've got a third string here for like what the function would be if you want to tweak within this with it in this designer if you make this on your own because this is just free visual basic you don't need to buy it it's just you can start making this on your own if you followed through um but you can add a lot more parameters to this just as you as you see of how to add you know if you wanted to add like a new a new box to to list things then you could do that and then you can you know kind of play with it as we do it but You'll, 
it's basically, I guess, this part here is what it's for. So the, the, the tuple would basically be the function. There's a key, there's a value, and then there's a function associated with it. Now, I haven't really done the function part of it, but that would be the part of the programming where you can make it actually interact with the program and say, okay, I want it to do certain things with when it moves certain things with when it sees somebody, certain things with whatever the behavior is gonna be. And you'll see how that goes once we get it kind of functional. It'll make more sense. But that's what those are, is basically the list of the inputs and the list of the actions, and then what all the data associated with those. So we've got a number of inner neurons that we've got. that we've got to define. We've got a citizen ID, which is a string. It's probably better practice to just say, you know, to put in like a default. And, you know, like on numbers, I put in, like if you put in negative one, things like that. If you're bug going through and you're not sure what's going on, Sometimes it helps to have something. If you don't define something, it, the string won't even show. But if you have default name and then you're trying to figure out what happened, did the string even change? Sometimes it'll help to have that. So it's good practice to put like a default in there just in case something goes wrong. And then we have a we have a name. Which is, yeah, which is what I already did there, didn't I? We'll do default name, default ID. And we'll do a, an integer for sex. So we know, because we're basically that's what we're setting. So we've got uh, get random name and get random int that we've got to make here. And it's just going to be making a name, a random name. And then returning just a random a random six. It's going to return a string on this one. And then we're going to return a integer on this one. integer of incoming we'll just do let's see here we'll do So this one we'd go, we use a random class, which is pretty generic. So random so basically saying rand is going to be the, the name we're defining for the new random number. And then it, when you say new random, it's, it's basically saying the same thing as the random class has a constructor like this. Instead of citizen, it's for the random class, and then it basically will build a random number generated based off of that class. Is basically what that is, but it's a pre-built class in part of the C library. So when you see that new random with a or new whatever with a parentheses, that's what it's doing. It's basically going to a new class, just like we made classes for all of our different parts of our program. The C 
language itself has a bunch of classes that make up the program, make up the language that we're working with. So we've got a choice and we've got if So ran so basically well let me do this real quick. So if we do that then choice is equal zero and then else So that's our, our integer that we want to return. So in the random class itself, there's a function called next, kind of like there's a function called get random int within our citizen class. So you can see here where it says the int citizen dot get random int and then it shows int by how many. That's basically the structure of how we get to this little formula. That's what random.next is. So it's basically the random class has got a for it's got a function called next. And it's basically taking in two values, it's taking in a minimum value and a maximum value. So we're we're bringing in the the maximum values only we want two two options. So it's going to give us a, a random between 1 and 2 basically. But we could give it a, a random of between 1 and 10 and it'll gi it'll give us a then it would give us one in 10, and then if one in 10 chance, it would be zero, and one in 10, and then the other odds would be one. So that's basically what we're doing here. But since we've only got by two, we've got that going. And then the random name, it's kind of the same. It's kind of the same thing, only we're doing it with strings. So we've got a length. We've got a length of basically characters. Each string is a uh, each character. Each string is basically a, a list or, or an array of characters. Each character would be A, B, C, D, one, two, three, each digit by itself. So for this one, we're going to need to bring in a couple things, and I'll just copy it, and then we'll explain it. So we're bra we're basically saying let's make a new random class. Bring in a new thing, and the R represents that class now, that new object that we created. And then we've got a string of constants, and we've got a string of vowels that we can use in here. So it's basically going to randomly pick between the constants. So it's going to basically, this is saying next between, give us a random number anywhere between 0 and the length of constants and then put it to upper so that's going to be the first the first um, letter will be to upper because it's capitalized so if it's the first one is h then it says to upper is going to capitalize that h so then the name the next part of the name is going to add a vowel and it's going to do a random vowel and then it'll basically Based on how many, how much the length is, it's going to go through and kind of do the same thing. So it's going to add two more to the string each time, and then you'll see how that gets done. So that's basically how that's working. It's just going through this list and saying, "Give me the first one and capitalize it, then give me a vowel, and then go through however many times we told it to go through, and then give me another constant, and another vowel, and another constant, and another vowel, and another constant, and another vowel." And then send it, send whatever comes back as, as as the name. So that's how it's generating the name. Pretty pretty simple way of getting kind of a random thing. And you could do, you know, you could be kind of creative. You can get all kinds of weird weird things with that. 
All right, so we need some tuples. We've got genome and brain that we've still got to build. So we've got a tuple of behaviors, which is basically a four, a four depth tuple, which is three strings and a double. So it's basically going to be sending the um, uh, the neuron. It's going to be sending the neuron information basically and the weights associated with each neuron. So basically, what we're building is an, like an artificial intelligence network, and then each neuron has different weights associated with which basically generates all the different behaviors that we would have, and this is going to hold all that information. So that covers that. Citizen brain tuples we don't have built yet. Citizen genome we don't have built yet. So the loc x and loc y we need. Call that an integer since it's an integer. And we'll have x y and z since we're in the citizen class this is going to be where he is and so when we create the citizen we're going to go create the neurons the id the name the sex we're going to create the genome which we're we, have, we haven't made quite yet and then we're going to create the brain then we create the world location which we just did because um, we've already got the world state built. And then this is where we're going to add the entity to the world map. So this is the last function we need to do on the for this part of the the world map here. And so we're going to add the entity which is the citizen, which says this. So when you say this, you're representing whatever this current object is that you're working within. So if this is a copy of the object, whatever this copy happens to be. So when we make a population, we're making a hundred of these copies. So whatever the program runs into this copy, when we send this particular copy off to a different function, it's going to go through and say, this is the one that we want. We don't want any other citizen. And then any of the data that's been changed associated with this, like the brain and the genome, everything else is goes with it. So that's basically what we're saying there. And then we're giving it a location and we're giving it a world map, which is basically our world state. Oops. Do there. If I can get the right stuff, there we go. Okay, so this is a citizen class, and we'll call this. Let's call this ID. This is the ID of the citizen. And then we'll just use the same. But when we're making the class itself, we wanted we wanted to find what is coming into the function. So the, they need to be what type of data that we're bringing in. So these are this is a citizen object, this is an integer object, this is a world state object.
wonder if I goofed that up in that other one. I want to make a little marker here because this may be a... I'm not sure if that's necessary or not. We'll, we'll find out as we go through it. We're basically saying whatever the length of the citizen IDs that we have, which the world state will have the length when we build the world. It's going to have the population. It's going to grab that from the pop whatever population is associated with it. So it really shouldn't matter as long as we're still dealing with the same worlds, the same program, basically. Don't think it'll matter. So we also have coordinate. So we've got a citizen location and we've got a coordinate with, and we're sending the, so basically we're making a new location where we're adding the entity to the map. And we've already made the coordinate. So our coordinate basically says we're sending a citizen, our three locations, and then the world state. So we can basically loc x, loc y, Look Z, and then we want to send the world map, which is really the world state. So there we have a new coordinate. Now that we're in the world state, from citizen, we've got create, we've we said go to world state and add an entity. So now we're in world state, we add an entity, we've created a new coordinate, we've placed it into the map. That's basically what we've done with this line here if world state generation oops so now we want to basically run through a filter so we want to make sure that We're not dealing with the same data. We're not dealing with the same world map. Otherwise, there's no point in going through all the, redoing all the information if we're dealing with the same world map. But otherwise, so if, if we don't have the same world map, we're not gonna do anything at all. We'll just put that right there. We'll just say, do nothing. And we could do like an error. We could do like a a console. You know, there was no you know the world maps uh, match. You know, to do something. Um, I didn't go that far yet. So then we've got world state. And then we've got set coordinate, which I. I thought we made it. Which we'll, we'll have to go make it in world state. Which we'll have to make it after this. So we're going to send in the loc x and the loc y. And I'm going to send in the loc z because I didn't have that in there before. And then we'll send in the citizen We'll send in a citizen location. So we'll do the set coordinate. set coordinate and where did that go 
Thought we already put that in there. Well, we did. But I have two different functions here, so we do set coordinate. And set coordinates, we need to change up. Set coordinates, plural, is a list of coordinates that we're bringing in. So basically we're doing it if we want to set each coordinate at a time or if we want to set like a group of coordinates like if we have like a like a copy of something so i equals zero i is less than Oops, I equals zero. When I is less than X, so this is a basic way to kind of go through, you can go through images this way, you can go through maps, coordinate systems, but it's basically a for loop within a for loop. So this time we'll, we'll do a different integer and you could do if you wanted to do it to make it easier whatever makes it make sense to you you can name them whatever you know bob's uncle and then you know bob's niece if it makes it easier for to figure out what what's going on here and then so for every iteration of h when h is less than y we're going to add H after we get done with whatever's in here. So for loops can confuse a lot of people because it's it's basically like going through an array of an array. So when you've got a grid system, you're going through when it's the first X values. So at the first stage here, we're at X, X zero and then we go to Y zero. So once y0 gets done with, it's going to increment that to y1, and we're still at x0. So once it gets all through that, it'll go down to 1 for, for x, and go back through and do all the y stuff, and then go back down to, to x, go back through and do all the y stuff. So that's basically how you're iterating. You're taking the, the array and going one direction, and then each time it finishes the one direction, it'll jump down the other direction. So that's basically what a for loop is doing for you. And it can get real kind of confusing in the head of trying to, you can really overthink this stuff. It's kind of crazy how, how you can really overthink for loops and spend just way too much time thinking what's, Overthinking what's really kind of a simple thing because it look is it seems more complex than it is, you know So basically all we're doing here is we're going to add a new coordinate and then we're going to um, Set the so basically we've got this whole new list of coordinates and we don't really care what the list is that we're sending in because we're basically clearing it out and we're adding a new one when we if it happens to match we're going to add a new coordinate. And we don't have a citizen associated with this because we're basically we're just making the map with this point. So we've got the X's and then the Y's, which are basically the I's and the H's in our little for loop here. And then the world state we want to send is again this which which represents 
this world state that we're dealing with, whatever version it happens to be, send it as the the parent of the new coordinate, basically, is what it's saying. Oh, and we forgot the X value or the Z value. That's what we forgot. So we're just setting no Z value at this point. And so that's that's basically the whole map. And then what we want to do is we want to send the, since we're dealing with whatever world state we're sending, we want to send, um, we want to basically set the new coordinates that we just made as the coordinates to use. So we take in new coordinates, we cleared them, we went through and we said, make a new coordinate for every X and Y of our map size, whatever the size is, make a new coordinate for every, co for every pixel. And then set those coordinates as the, as the new coordinates system, basically, the new coordinate map. And when we say set coordinate, we're basically saying set the particular coordinate of the coordinate list to be this coordinate. So we're basically, we can assign individually each coordinate or we can assign the whole map all at once is basically what those two functions are doing. And this one needs to be changed up too because we have a zero for the Z. Did I spell it wrong there? Oh no, we have too many. We're only sending Z and Y, or X and Y, and the citizen location, aren't we? up here. I know what I'm doing there. It's not a new class that we're trying to do. We're just trying to set the world map coordinate. There we go. We need to set the right. We're sending in this to this variable. We need to make sure that that variable is being used. That's what's going on there. All right, so we got coordinate. So we're creating our citizen. We're adding the entity. So we've now, now set the coordinate for this entity. Now we need to, the ID itself, which is the citizen, we're gonna go back and we're set um, the, current position. Is equal to Citizen location. We don't have we don't have current location let yet. Oh, 
It helps if you spell things right. Otherwise, you end up going, why doesn't it work? So the last position is the same. So we're creating a new entity. So current last, we're just basically saying is the new coordinate. And then um, we're going to add it to the movement history, which is a list of coordinates. So the movement history. location. So now the citizen will have the first location added to its history. So we have so we have a something we can go back on if we ever want to look back on what happened with this what happened with this dude. And now we're going to add the add the dude or the dude it whatever it is. And then we'll set the coordinate color on the world map itself, just so that we know. So we've got the location we want to send, and we got to make this real quick. And then we want the world state default. Color, and then we want the the bitmap. We're just going to be the world map. And so when we go down to set coordinate color, we're basically saying set the particular pixel on this map, whatever color we just sent it. So that's just kind of a simplified little something we could call. We could call it from anywhere. And then it'll, the, so if we're dealing with a particular one that we have selected, it'll, it'll set the color, that kind of thing. So it's a handy little mini function. Um, these things we need to add into our citizen real quick as parameters. Let me see where I did that. Okay, there we go. All right, so basically we've got So we've got a last position, a coordinate, uh, current position. This way we could tell where it was and where it was going and where it's going to. Um, we've got a movement history, which shows kind of the history. And then um, what this, this is a different one that shows the citizen history of various things it might've done. I haven't really used it, but you know, if it gathers food, if it attacks another player, if it got hurt, if it, you know, got loses stamina, if it gained stamina, whatever might happen. This is kind of what this is built for, is this kind of history of actions, whatever might have happened to it in the world. It got damaged, it, whatever. Um, so that's what that would be. Um, let's see that environment. environment interaction history, we'll call it that, whether it's other people or whatever it is. Something that we could use later for, for passing that kind of stuff if you wanted to make a game with it. And then we've got, um, I think we're down to brain and genome. So let's go ahead and do G 
genome and brain. We'll do world step or a current step to figure out where or which generation we're at for the citizen itself and then what world he's associated with. No manner of neurons we already have. This is the same kind of thing. I added this in. I haven't really used it yet, but you could have a list of a list of relationships. Since we're in, in the citizen in, in the citizen class. So you could you could add children, you could add friends, you could add enemies, you could add whatever kinds of you just have a new list of whatever kinds of things you wanna you wanna throw in there. So because these are relationships, they would be different citizens that would be uh, interacting for those lists, and then you can manipulate that kind of data pretty easy. Um, let's see what else do we want. Got genome length. Got maybe a list of items, like maybe if you wanted to carry stuff around, you just do a, a list of string items or a list of weapons. Like let's say you do a weapon class, then you could put in a list of weapons and then it would be a list of you know weapons. And then you could have a whole class of different weapons, that kind of thing. So that's how you could have you can really add a whole lot of depth just by doing different lists of different various things that this um, that this guy can have or this creature. So here's our overrides for killing and allowing children. Right now, I don't have a lot uh, the children allowing just because we'll just get it working, and then I can show you the code on how that how that goes how it breaks down the genome and then figures out which parts to use of which parent. And then, we've got a list of weights I'll put in here with behaviors. So these are the weights of the neurons that determine the behaviors. Now here's a bunch of stuff that I've that I've added in. Now some of these are from the guy that I've kind of started. I didn't originally had So this is just basically some of the parameters from the video that I that the, that the citizen would need to have. The responsivist rate he talked about, the pheromones, whether or not they can emit them or not, what the rate of that pheromone emission would be. Um, and then the oscillator, I'm not sure how I want to do that yet, but I've just kind of so far set it as a double between one and zero of whatever the minimum and maximum of the oscillation rate, and then whether it can oscillate. Um, and then it's got a last direction um, this is whether or not it made a child. Made, made a child. Um, so if it's procreated, it'll, it'll say yes. And then the child gets put in the list of children. Um, if it's mutated, um, then we'll, we'll know. And it'll kind of have a history of like when it might have mutated. And then we've got a, a chance for children to die on creation, um, which is just kind of a small chance, kind of like the mutation chance. Um, and this is more because he has it more where if you survive in that in the in the one half of the map, um, if you survive in the one half of the map, then basically all the survivors make kids up to two three thousand population. So he has it set up that way. I had it set up. I have it kind of set up to where the coordinate system will be what dictates who makes children. Like if they happen to within a certain age range meet each other within the same coordinate and they both like each other, you know, those kinds of things. You can add a lot of parameters of depth that way. 
Um, and then, you know, once they're in the same coordinate, they can try to have sex. They can try to make a child. There's a chance the child can die. There's a chance, you know, that they can not bear children at all. Um, and then there's a chance that there's a mutation that happens on the child at birth. So there's, so there's a whole different depth of, inter, of possibilities that I've, inter, that I've interjected here that you could or couldn't use in whatever, if you're making this on your own. Um, might be something. And then detection range. He talked a little bit about detection ranges, um, which I'm not too sure how I'm going to do that. He's got some some uh, ratio like uh, gradients that he's dealing with, which I'm I'm pretty sure I know how to work around if we were to reverse engineer all that. But for now, we'll just get it working. But these are the the. Other things that I've kind of added in, just kind of what I think might I, I might want to add later that might affect this creature's life, basically. But they're not all necessary. What basically the only things that we're using right now are these four and the location information, for the most part, is all we're using. The rest of it is kind of fluff that I've added that you could kind of pick and choose whether or not you want to add that kind of fluff or not, you know? All right, so we've got genome. So we're in our class. Got public genome of integer length and I forgot what else. Citizen. So I'm just going to copy this over for our parameters. The genome is basically, it's fairly simple. Um, it's got a length to it. It's got a number of genes in the genome, um, which is represented by this array here. So it's just a gene array of different genes. Um, it's got the interneuron count, which is basically what we sent with the length here. It's got an ID for itself, which we'll make. Um, and then it's got genes in the genome, like a string array of each name of each gene. It's got a brain that's associated to it. It's got a citizen that's associated to it. And then it's got a list of weights that are associated to it. And that's basically the, the whole genome. So... In here, basically what we're gonna do is I've got a helper I've got just basically helper template function that's really handy that I use kind of sporadically in some things when I'm dealing with arrays. Some of the other ones I started doing lists so you don't need to do this as much. Um, when you're dealing with different types of arrays, lists are really kind of a little easier so I've been using those more. But if you're dealing with any kind of like a gene array or a string array, string arrays you can there's already functions to deal with those, but your own custom arrays for custom classes, um, just to kind of have a, a way to initialize the array right, basically. So it's just, a, the T represents whatever the class is. So you could send in an array of genes, and then you could send in the length of however big your array you want it to be. So if you want to set it to a, a size 20 array, this would be a really good helper function to do that. Because then you could say, I want to initialize array of citizens at 100. So you could do the population the same way um, if you're not using a list, you know, for example.
if you just had a citizen array, then you could use its little helper function to just kind of set the array up. So basically the citizen owner. So the only thing we're doing here is we're setting the, uh, who owns it. We're setting the brain is associated, which we haven't made yet, but we will. Um, which it hasn't even been created yet. So it's, I'll just kind of show you how that, how that, it doesn't even really matter that part. Um, but then we've got the ID of it. We've got the near error count that we're sending all the way from the form one all the way through and then the genome length. And then we've got the genome, uh, the genes in the genome. So we've got to make a gene. And a lot of times if you're, it's good to put things into try catch blocks just to, just to see if there's something that, that goes wrong, if there's if it's not initialized right, um, if one of these variables isn't initialized, it will throw an error. This way it'll still run the program without breaking it, um, but just to make sure that we're good. We haven't done the gene yet, so we'll need to go do that. Um, and then the genes will have a weight that we're pulling from there. So that's basically all this is. It's basically for each gene, for each genome length, we're going to make a new gene. And then we're going to add the weights to this genome list. And then we're going to add the weights to the citizen list for weights. Is basically how that's making the that part of it. So if we go to gene now. We can go to the gene and we can finish out the, it's almost, almost done. It gets, it, you know, the behaviors, the, the, the neuron is after the gene, which is part of the brain and then the behavior. So we've got just a couple more things to go through, but you can follow through all this stuff later when I post it. Just make sure I've got. So I'm just going to copy over the gene structure. So this division mount is used for the weight to get the weight down. He talks about how he how the weights are within ranges. So that's kind of what this division rate is for, which could be which could be set manually. Um, there probably should be a something on the form to give us an option for that. But basically, it's got a name. Um, it's got a label, um, and then whether or not it's a source gene or an action gene, um, or whether or not it has a source or an action associated with it. Um, the way he did genes is really, really interesting because it's basically taking a hex, a hex value, running it into binary, breaking that binary structure out, and then that structure is what this, this decides the gene. Um, so maybe we can, maybe we can kind of go over the, so where he, he goes through here. Let's see if it, so he's basically got each gene is represented by this hexadecimal number basically. 
And how he's broke it apart is, let's see if I can figure out where he did that. I should have already done this, but. Anyway. I don't know if he actually goes through it, so maybe I figured it out. Maybe I, maybe I just broke it out that way. Maybe I just broke it out by the way he described it. Yeah, okay. So I'm not sure exactly where I came up with that. All right. So basically, he explained it in the video, but I don't think he went through it in the video itself, maybe. Um, but basically, each hexadecimal number is a gene, and then we'll break it up. But that's what all these different things are used for, basically, is to determine what the gene source is where it go, where, and where it's going to, and then what its neuron is. So it's a little complicated, but we'll, we'll get through it. All right, so we've got a public. Just a generic default constructor that doesn't do anything for us right now. And then. I want that one. So I'll kind of break through here. So basically we're gonna make the gene and generate gene, what it's gonna do is give us our hexadecimal number. Or is it a byte array? I forget if it's a byte array. We might be making a byte array. No, it's a string, okay. So we've got a random. And then we're basically returning we're returning this formula which basically says Give us a random hex number of eight digits in a string format. So then we have an integer of digits. To send a random number. So then we got a random, and we've got a random, and we've got a returning the next iteration of our byte structure, which I'll go through here. I just want to return something for the thing first.
right, so we're doing a byte, a byte array. And we're basically taking a new byte for every um, So we're dividing by two. So if we give it an eight, we're basically 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 making four bytes out of an eight digit string. So now we've got four bytes and each byte is gonna represent, um, each byte will represent different parts of the, one will be the source, one would be the weight, and then one will be the sink, and then the other will be the weight. has a function where you can get the next byte, the next random byte. So it's gonna go through the buffer and then it's just gonna assign a random byte based on the number of digits that we gave it. So, we're, so then we'll have four bytes randomly generated in our new buffer. So the string result would then equal, we're gonna take the string class and we're gonna concact, just basically join. Let's do this because it's easier. So this is using link. This is the only thing I'm using link for, I think. So it's basically, it's a, it's a different way of writing the structure basically. So this is like a formula. Um, so it's saying for the value of X, um, set the value of string to an array. So for each, each item in the buffer, go through and set to an array of that type, basically, that, that structure of string, if that makes sense. So, and then if, we've got a modulo, which is basically just a, If, if it doesn't divide by zero, or if, it, if it's divisible by zero, is that right? And then we've got the random again going for the next. Six. What is that doing there? So that's going with the next bytes. So every. I think it's adding one. I forget what I'm doing there. Anyway, so that's what it's doing. That's what we get back when we get a gene, and you'll see it when we run it. 
that'll give us the name of the gene that gets to be broken down later. So now we've got another string that we want to bring in that's from hex to binary, which is another little helper function. So we're basically just taking the, the hex value from a string and we're converting it to binary. So now we have our binary string. We're setting our neuron count to the gene because it's getting passed from the form one. Um, and then I've got this build with bias here, which gives us, there was something I was having, I forget why I did this exactly. But there's something happening to where it was always a, a zero that was coming out in the very beginning. Between A and B, the divisor. It's my divisor. And determine connection type. Build the bias, we are, what are we doing with that? Oh yeah, this is what it's gonna determine what the first gene is gonna be, or what the first byte of the gene is gonna be. So source min, source max. I'll fix that. And then the divisor is the bias. And then we're returning a string, not an int. So we're basically taking a random number between whatever these are, and then we're going through divided by the divisor and determining whether or not this is going to be a source neuron neuron or an action neuron. And then if it if it doesn't meet that criteria, then it'll determine the So yeah, if it if it's within the divisor to determine this will be a source neuron and an action. And if it's not, then it'll determine this is a source inner neuron and this is an action inner neuron or a connection with an inner neuron is what that is showing there. And then I've got determined connection type, which is doing kind of the same thing for the So we've got a connection and a neuron. doing the same thing for the most part, only there's not a for loop or it's not a, um, 
random. So it's basically just saying, if we have the neuron that we know that we, if we have a neuron and we want to determine what that neuron is, then we can do it de depending on what the, what the connection type of the neuron is. So this is more of just a reference function. And then this is for the building of it. Um, and then we've got no gene behavior at the current time. The neuron source source ID ends up being um, string cares is basically our string cars, characters, whatever it is. Um, it's basically when we got the binary value, we put the binary value into a string array or into a character array. So we've got the ones and the zeros basically is what a binary value is. So you've got zeros and ones. Put that into an, a string array so that each zero and each zero, each one is part of an array now. So it's each got its own group so we can find it in that array or move it around or do whatever. And so what we've done is we've broken the, the, the entire binary string, which is something on the order of something on the order of, of this is what it would look like. But it's, even though the whole string itself is more like, the whole string itself is more like, this is what we're dealing with. And what we're doing is we're breaking it apart. So, when I say the neuron source ID is now going to be the first so the first part is going to be, so the first zero basically is, let me see if I see where I put it. I think we're using an indeterminate connection type. Yeah, so the first zero, we're determining the gene source type with the first zero here. And we don't have a behavior associated with it. And then the neuron source ID is going to be the next eight, next seven characters of that binary, of that hex value. So basically, we've got three, four. Let me do this here. Two, three. This is basically how it's working. So we got a hex we got a hexadecimal string up here. So this is the hexadecimal string, just a random. It's got eight characters. And then what we did is we broke each one of these into four bytes. So each byte then represents is represented by a binary figure of eight digits. The first digit of the eight is going to determine the source type. The seven digits after determine the source um, ID. And then I'll show you how that determines whether or not which, it basically determines which neuron we're gonna use, which um, action or which behavior the, the creature's gonna use. This is how it, how it basically generates that behavior. So the first one determines the type, the second part determines the ID itself. And then we go into the sync type. So it does the same thing with another with the second bit. So now we've got the two bits that are covered, or two bytes that are covered in our byte array. One is for the source neurons, and one is for the sync neurons, where they go to. And then the weight is the rest of it. So the weight is gonna be
something on order of this big. And for the weight, we're basically doing this. So this ends up being And it's not, you know, this is just a representation of what's going on. This is the hexadecimal number, a four byte array that we have. This is the binary representation of that, or approximately, it's just, I've made it up, but that's what it would look like. This is the source where we're breaking it apart where the first one determines, and then the other part determines another part. This is the sink where we break it apart. And this is the weight where we break the weight apart by this will give us the number, and then this gives us the sign, whether it's positive or negative. So now we've got all of that. We're basically taking in the last string character to calculate the weight and the sign. So we, get, we take the whole string array, or the character array, and put it into this calculate weight function. And we're going to return a string. And we're passing in an array of characters. So basically we've got this, this character array. We're gonna make a new array. We're gonna say it's 20 characters long. Um, Cause we don't need it any bigger than that. And then we've got a new weight with just an empty string. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna go through a for, for loop. So for every, every string divided by two, for every part of the array divided by two, when it's less than the total, do something. So we're adding the weight. So the string character, so every two we're gonna to add to the weight. So the string character of I would represent. Basically the, the, total, the total sum of the, the 16 digits here, we're dividing it in half to get this part. So that's what this is doing. So this is dividing that in half. And then this is the total of that. So for every, what's left over of that. Then we're basically taking the last half and adding it into the weight. So we, we add it into our array. So the weight basically is saying from 16 on, we're gonna add at 16 and then it'll go one and it'll get 17. So the 16th digit of the array is when it's gonna to add to the weight. And then we catch an exception that if it can't, for some reason, add to the weight, and then we send the weight. So that's how we get that. And then the sign is kind of the same thing. We just take a character instead of an array, and then we determine whether if it's a zero, then it's a negative, it's a one, give it a positive, send those back. So that's what those two, two functions are doing there. And then here I'm just converting the weight to a double for easier reference. So I've got a... just a converted weight double. I don't know what I'm listening to here. And basically this is taking the weight um, as a string, the division amount, and then the string sign. And we're basically creating a double. 
We're converting the integer that we sent it. We're giving it a result um, based off of the integer dividing by the amount of the dividing by the division amount. This is a cast, so it's basically saying this is an integer here. I divided by I the integer, but we want it to be a double. So we're casting this as saying, make this a double when you do that calculation and then give us a result and we put that into a double and then we round that off to, 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 to two decimals. That gives us our mod weight. And if we have an error, we, get a, we, we go zero. Now, if our sign is zero, then we add negative to the weight. If the sign is positive, we add positive to the weight and then we return the weight. So it's pretty simple. Um, Pretty simple deal and then convert weight I don't even know if I'm using it much but we'll do it I'm using it once but this is the same exact thing the only thing it's doing is it's it's converting the weight and giving us a string so this gives us a double, this gives us a string. Same same deal. So that should be our gene. So there we made a gene. So now we can go back to our citizen and the genome is now complete. If we go back to the genome, all the gene information is now complete. So the citizen now has a genome and it now has all the genes associated with the genome. So the only thing we have left is to create a brain. So let's go back to our brain. And we've got this. So the brain is pretty simple itself. Well, the brain isn't very simple itself. It actually does a lot of the, does a lot of the work. For determining what the behaviors are, assigning the neurons, and also for some of the actions. But we'll go ahead and add in a bunch of a bunch of crap here. So basically what we've got is we've got neurons, we've got a number of inputs, we've got a number of outputs, we've got a number of inner neurons that we're using. We've got a, an array of different, of these different things. We've got a number of connections that they all have. Um, we've got the division amount again that we could change around. I don't think it's actually used in here because it's uh, when the gene is assigned is when it's used. Yeah, I'm not, I don't even think I'm using that. Yeah, because we're doing that in the gene, so let's not confuse that. So then we've got a total number of inner puts, inner and outer puts, and, and inner neurons and inputs. We've got an owner of the brain, we've got an ID for the brain, we've got a genome that's associated with the brain, which we just made. We've got a link, a list, which is basically a list of all the links um, that the brain is going to make and that's just for a reference which is going to go into this list box here to show us the connections basically so then we've got um, a list of neurons which is basically the same thing here this is just an array of neurons it's the same thing a list is kind of a little easier to work with um, I'm finding I've, I've been working with arrays. I just like lists. They're, they're working pretty good. And then we've got basically behaviors. So it's got a behavior list um, on the sensory side and the action side. And then it's got a key list of what that behavior is looks like or what its key is basically like whether it's... Um, I've got it basically alphabetical. So A of I would be A, A input A or A of O would be output A. So kind of simplified. And you'll see why when we start generating the map of the brain, 
if you have too long of strings, it'll just be hard to see to figure out. Um, and then we've got um, each inner neuron has a source behavior potentially and a, a key or a sync that it goes to. And then we've got um, image locations. The brain, the, the brain is going to handle how to draw the map of the brain as well. This class. So this is what these these lists are basically locations of where those would be. Um, we've got brain tuples, which are which are using in the citizen itself. And then this is what we're using to pass a lot of the information back and forth. Um, tuples are pretty cool. They can go pretty deep. Um, and then I've got an uh, input action list. And basically these are coming from the behavior list. So this is just for coming backwards um, so that we, we can reference things. Um, we've got a source coordinate, a sync coordinate. This is mainly for the mapping of the images. So it's not actually anything with the world state itself that we built. This would be the string arrays, which I don't even know. I'm, I don't even think I'm using to be honest with you. But it looks like a lot of stuff. It's not too terribly bad. So I've got a public, or, or I've got a basic brain deal, and I'm not even using these, so I don't. I'm not too worried about it. I've got that initialized that that array template. Where did we have that? I basically, just copied it into here. So that way you can take an array of neurons and initialize it however we have it set there. But this is this is actually never really used that reference anyway. So, so, so now we're going to create a brain and we're associating who owns it, what the genome, because we already created the genome. And then we're li listing our, at, our input lists, um, which are coming from the form, basically. Here is a way that we can manipulate this input list and change it and add different functions and behaviors while it's running. Um, so that's basically what that's for. So if we associate all of these, we assign the owner of the brain, we assign the idea of the brain, which is just going to be the brain's owner name with a B in front of it. Um, and then basically we've got an inner neuron count, which we're bringing from the first part of the form. We're bringing the genome that we just made. We're bringing the action and the input tuple list in, and then we're assigning the neuron counts. So now we set our arrays and set the total number of neuron counts or inputs because we haven't actually mapped the brain yet to the genome. So we're basically resetting all our inputs because what we're going to do right now is we're going to map the genome with this. So we're going to go through a for loop. So if I got it all right.
of this one. Delete that one. There we go. All right, so the neuron we still have to make. Um, and so all of this stuff is associated with the neuron itself, part of that class. So that's basically what we need to do next to be able to map this. To map the genome, what we built out of the genome, to what it's actually going to do in the brain. So let's go to the neuron and look at that. We've got our default constructor there. And then we should be able to run this here pretty quick after we get this going. All right. So here's our neuron that we're making. We've got a gene that's associated with it. We've got a citizen that's associated with it. We've got a type of neuron that it is, whether it's a source or an action. We've got the input and the action tuples, which are basically being sent to the behavior so it knows what to choose from. That's basically why they keep, you keep seeing these repeated. So we've, we've sent it from the citizen. We've got these tuple lists, which is coming from the form. And then we're going to the brain and we're sending these these tuple lists back to the neuron, and the neuron is going and it's going to send these back to the behavior. So basically, we've got to set the the neuron is a basic is a pretty simple deal. It's got a it's got a behavior associated with it. It's got its uh, sync and source ID and its weight, and then it's um, what gene um, it's coming from. And then the owner of the neuron, what brain? And I've also got, I've also kind of redid this. So most of these are what's being used instead of these. So just to make sure that, yeah, it's all these that are being used. So it's it's got a behavior class, a brain class, a gene class, a genome, and a citizen all associated with it. So each object will be associated. So if you, we could look back on the, the neuron itself and then go back and say, who owns this neuron and what other parts do they have? Basically is, is how that can work. So the only thing we're doing here is we're setting a behavior. And the behavior is a very simple class that just takes the information of the, the inputs and the actions and assigns it. So we can go to the behavior now and we can assign that. And I'll just put this in here. So we've got a key in effect, a type, a decimal, and then a tuple, which is basically a list of all those things. And then the dictionary, I don't think I'm using. And then these were just kind of my, these are my basic ones. So they're not the list that he has going, but we're not using them anymore. That's when I was designing this, that's, I was using a lot of those. I think at this point we're only using these these properties. But I can double check on that and we go through here. So the neuron creates a behavior. It sends the gene, it sends the genome, it sends the type of the neuron, the type of behavior that it is, and then it sends these tuple these uh, inputs and actions again. So that's basically all it's doing is it's assigning the input and the action to these. And then we've got four functions, basically, that we're adding here. Determined connection type is basically the same function that we wrote in the genome, but it's taking the gene itself and then the, and then and the behavior type 
And then depending on the dehager type, it's gonna go through the action array, um, which is the tuple. Wait a minute. Yeah, I think we, maybe I need to change that. I might need to change that up. Maybe I didn't update that when I did the, all this. Change to use the tuples instead because I don't want it to just use the wrong data. So that's just basically de determining whether or not it's a um, an action or an inner neuron or a source neuron. And then we've got the convert ID is basically going to take the the gene and the type and turn it into make sure I got this right yeah okay so this is using the tuples I think this is I think this is what this is Just make sure. So I may need to add the. change this up here so input tuple list dot count so we'll do this here we'll make another Comment. I, actually, I'm gonna finish what we're doing before I get too carried away on that. I'll comment that out, and then we've got two more functions to do, and then we should be able to start running this. Hopefully. I think that's what I did on this one too. So this is basically taking the effect and now I'm using the tuples on this one and finding the, it's finding the effect based off the key and the type. That uses the tuples. Looks like I just need to upgrade the connection type one. I forgot to do that. And then for set strength, basically we're just taking the weight. So we've got the genome that comes in. Um, and then for each genome, we're basically determining we're setting, we're getting all the values for each of the genes. And then depending on what the gene is, we're gonna start, we're gonna floor this weight value. So we're gonna floor the weight value. Or not floor it, but um, we're basically gonna take the tangent function of that to get the, the the to get it within a zero or a one, so that it can uh, do the math on the weights right. So basically, we're we're narrowing it down between he's got the input neurons or the the inner neurons are going between four and negative four, 
And then the source neurons and the action neurons are um, the weight is brought down basically between one and zero. And then uh, the source neurons I th or the action neurons are negative one and zero. So source neurons are one and z between zero and one. The inner neurons are between zero, negative four and four. And then the action neurons are between negative one and one. And that's what this is doing. It's just basically saying, take all those numbers that we've figured out in the gene and put those into that range of numbers is basically what this set strength is. And so we're all done with that. So now we can go back to the gene. And I think for the most part, we're done with the gene. And double check we're good on the genome. It's good on the gene, on the brain. Now we got the brain. Hmm. All right, so I think we're all set. Let's see if it works. I think it's gonna work. See if it works. It it opened up. So let's see if I can add the. Um, no, that's not the one I want. Let's do this. All right. So here it is. So let's see if we can generate a world. Now, did we do any maps? I don't think we did any maps. Or we didn't even... Well, it works. But let me, let me see where we're at on the... I think we forgot to do... Yeah, I think we're... I think we originally got stuck on generating the world and then... We had to make a bunch of stuff. All right, so we got world state. That's where we're at. So, okay, so here we are. We're creating our world. We've got a population that we're creating, which is a list of citizens. Um, we're going to clear out this box. Figure out which. list box in here and we've got a picture box in here So 
This is where our where we can go back on our world and look at the history of it. So list box seven, we want to clear that just because every time we generate a world, it'll just add to that list. If we don't clear it out, and then it'll give us an error. So list box. It's going to be easier to do. Did I spell it wrong? No. It didn't take the name I wanted to give it. No wonder. So we're clearing the world history this box. And then we're going to set the draw mode on this box five, which is our world to draw fixed. Or lay f so this is basically we're adding in our we're adding in our population right now so let's do do population here Create citizens. So that's what this for loop is doing. And so it's for, for the total of the population that we set. It's going to run through and make a new citizen. And is this not working at all? Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay. I thought that wasn't working for a sec. All right. So then. This is where I got the mutation chance in here, which um, this is just where it sets. Why is this list box draw item? got going here. I think I renamed a So we need list box five selected inbox changed. So we're gonna draw, this is for, this is a custom draw item list box function basically. So it's going through and it's basically gonna determine whether or not if, if it's male or female, it's gonna assign a color in the text box or the list box that we just did. So that's what that's doing. It's just assigning the um, it's a new event handler for the for the list box so that it can do a custom color but that's kind of how you would do that is um, since we did the draw mode here the draw mode owner fixed 
then you can basically say the draw item is a new event handler that we defined, which is this, which is basically how you would, it takes the graphics um, and basically is filling the whole rectangle with a brush of whatever color you want, basically. So for whatever draw, for ever li any list box that you wanna do, it'll do this. So um, I'll show you one other where it'll, in the occupants list box, we'll do the same thing using that same function. All right, so now we've got citizens. Make sure I'm, make sure I'm right, right where I need to be. That's all overly stuff we don't need. part I gotta figure out where population Sorry, I gotta figure out what this. This one here is label 14. So I'm going to set that label. Um, this is box five. We're going to set the selection of the, the first citizen, basically, is what that says. So 12 and 13. Let me just make sure I've got. four and three. And then picture box one. World picture box. Starting state. Don't have a world map on it. Go back to world state. Make sure we have a bitmap. I thought we had a bitmap. public bitmap called that. No, it, it's there. Ah, it's not public. So if it's not public, it can't be seen. Now let's see if we got it. We've got action. We aren't 
listing these guys in there right, probably because I don't have something. All right, so we don't have anything going here because we don't have any functions, but we've got a world with 100 things in it. But we aren't listing the genome members, probably because we So there's another custom list box thing. we created. this real quick. Let's see if maybe I had the wrong draw item thing on there. population is zero. Oh, that might help, wouldn't it? Did we set our Now comes the fun part, figuring out which, which part of this is all goofed up. not add that handler. Let's see what happens because I'll bet it's the handler that's screwing us all up there. Maybe. No.
use this one. Machine gun label. First of all, I want to make sure that we've got a population before it goes in there. Okay. I need to add There it is. We're missing one crucial line there. So we're adding the population of the array that we just created and putting it into the coordinates. Now we should have Now we've got 100 population members, and each one of these guys has some stuff. I don't have these open yet, but at least we've got 100 members. And so the next part, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break, but the next part of whatever this video series is, is gonna be, um, is what we'll do is we'll add, now that we've got all these functions, we'll do the overlay um, we'll do the world history. We'll do the brain structure um, as a new form, maybe. It's not even really necessary. But it'll also, uh, the genes will show up here. So then we could decode the genes, and then it'll also show all the, the data of the genes and all these different things. And then we'll do the code to add all where each, like when you select the citizen, um, it will update all of this information and what who else is with them and that so yeah that's basically so here's the shell of it anyway so now we've got a hundred people that we've created with a brain associated with them that we can't see yet but we will next time but at least it's all working and it's all there we just can't see it yet but I appreciate you watching. I'll throw this up on YouTube. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully people learn some stuff. I know I've kind of gone through it a little quick, but trying to explain a little bit. It's, I've, I've been working on this maybe three or four days uh, for the original version that I've got going. Um, so it's not too long once you get it kind of formulated in your head of how to organize it all. Um, and then once we add more functions to it, you'll, you can see it a lot easier, how it all kind of comes together. But yeah, we'll do the movement and stuff like that next. Hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.